Yo, what's up? <laughs> yeah, what's up? Welcome to the Better Together podcast. Uh, hopefully, dude, what's up? What's up? How's it going? Welcome to life. Hopefully, it's a good day for you. If it's not, I hope it gets better. Um, anyways, I'm going to be straight up with you. My, by the way, my name is Sebastian Gomez. If you don't know who I am, my name is Sebastian Gomez. And I do YouTube, I do Twitch, and I love Jesus. And... Um, I'm just gonna talk today. I'm gonna talk today and I'm going to expel some thoughts. Today, I'm gonna talk about doubt and doubting my faith. The reason I mentioned that is because I've still had a struggle with doing this podcast. But Seb, you just said a couple of podcasts ago that you were excited to do this, that you're gonna take a step of faith. Just because I take a step of faith doesn't mean that Fear isn't, is gone. It's still there. It's just that I choose to trust God rather than trusting in the fear that's standing by the door, behind me, in front of me, by the sides, wherever, because it feels like it's everywhere. So anyways, yeah, I still struggle with doing this podcast, but I want to. I want to. I really do. I really do. It's just that I hold this podcast at such a high level. I want to offer people joy and hope. I don't want someone to listen to this and be like, what the F did I just listen to? Like, I just wasted 30 minutes of my life. And maybe I'm oversharing, but yeah, sometimes I feel like that. So I'm like, I need to do a good job. So recently I did a podcast with my best friends, Jess and Gabriel. They came to visit California and I did two podcasts with them along with Bobby and Jake, my other two good friends. And I was like, great. I don't have to do a podcast for the next two weeks. And guess what? It's Sunday night, the night before I shoot this podcast. I mean, upload the podcast. And here I am, 12.30 a.m. <laughs> Just giving it a shot because I'm facing my fears and I'm trusting in Jesus. And so please, if you're listening to this, please give me some grace because I'm going to do my best. And the reason I say please give me this some grace is because I don't see myself as a teacher. I've never seen myself as a professor or someone smart because guess what? I went to summer school three times in a row. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. I went to school. Uh, I can't even speak. I went to summer school three times in a row. Math, religion, science, every topic. <laughs> Failed all of it. Dude, so... Please understand where I'm coming from. I'm going to give it my very best shot. Dude, I even struggle with reading. I don't know if anyone ever experienced this when they were a kid, but when I was a kid in middle school, uh, I'm going to give you guys an example. So when I was in middle school, I had this teacher called Miss Ritchie, and she liked to have the whole class read through the textbook. So she'd start off with Natalie. And she'd be like, Natalie, we're going to start off reading paragraphs 1 through 24 on the textbook. Natalie, you start off. And one by one by one, everyone's reading each and every paragraph. And I'm just like, all right. I'm sitting in the back. I'm just like, all right, who's next? Billy's next? Okay, then it's Timmy. Then it's Greg. Then it's Sarah. Then it's Emily. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm paragraph number nine. And I try, I look at paragraph number nine and I'm like trying to remember it. I read it over and over and over again because the minute it's my turn, I know I'm going to screw up. I don't want to sound dumb. I don't want to sound stupid. I don't want to sound like a fool in front of my classmates. And guess what? I still do. Why? Because I still screw it up. I screwed it up all the time in middle school. It'd be my turn and I'd still screw it up. And I'd try to memorize that paragraph like 30 times. I still use my finger anytime I read. I still use my finger under each and every word because I can't just look at a book and read at it. I need my finger to be under every word because I still screw up. I put like words, like a word that's behind another word that I'm supposed to read first and I put that word behind and I put it in front of it. Anyways, I have a hard time reading. I have a hard time studying. I'm not the best scholar. I'm not the best teacher. I'm not the best explainer. But... I'm going to give it my very best shot because guess what? I want to do something good and I want to glorify God through it. So please, if you're listening to this, if you're watching this, I'd really appreciate some grace. <laughs> so thank you for about that. Thank you about that. I can't even speak. No, but seriously, thank you about that. I really appreciate it. So with that being said, uh, thank you for hearing me rant. I want to talk about something. 
which is very important to me, which is called doubting faith. Why? Because that's what I'm, uh, I've been recently experiencing with this podcast, with uh, trying to understand what God has called me to do. And uh, I'm going to go to a story in the Bible, which is the story of Peter and Jesus when they're out on a boat and Jesus walks on water. Now, the reason I want to talk about this is because I understand a lot of people doubt their faith. And I want to tell you and be the first person to let you know that I doubt my faith all the freaking time. A little less now, but I'll tell you why. I still doubt it for sure, but I doubt it a little less and I'm going to explain why. So we're going to enter this story. And I know that this story has been used by every pastor, every teacher, but please give me a shot. So anyways, we're going to read this story. So this story takes place right after Jesus uh, feeds the 5,000 with the fish and the loaves of bread. And so I'm going to read this small little chapter and just tag along, maybe imagine it because that's what I try to do when I hear stories from the Bible. I just try to imagine it and it's effing cool. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, let's go. Anyways. So this is a story. Jesus walks on water. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake. While he sent the people home, after sending the, them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was out there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, It's a ghost! But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage. I'm here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you, walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped him. You are the son of God, they exclaimed. After they had crossed the lake, they landed at Genes <laughs> Genesaret. When the people recognized Jesus, the news of his arrival spread quickly throughout the whole area, and soon people were bringing all their sick to be healed. They begged him to let the sick touch at least the fringe of his robe, and all who touched him were healed. So the reason I'm talking about this story is because when I did this first podcast, I was like, I believe in Jesus. Let's go. I'm going to take a step of faith. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. And I was like, Jesus called me. Let's go. And I see myself as Paul. I mean, Paul. I see myself as Peter sometimes. Because in this story, Peter makes an impulsive decision. He's like, Lord, is that you? If it's you, tell me to come out on the water. And he's like, yeah, it's me. Paul doesn't hesitate. He just jumps out on the water. And that's what I did with this podcast, where I was kind of like, I'm going to jump out. I'm going to do it. I'm going to take this step of faith. And guess what? I did it. And I got excited. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm trusting in Jesus. I'm doing it. And all of a sudden, the wind, the waves, the water start hitting. And I start sinking. And I was like, what the heck is going on? I thought this was going to be easy. I thought this was going to be A-OK. -okay. The doubt came in. And it's cool. The reason I mention this is because I know a lot of people have experienced doubt. A lot of the times when we start a relationship with Jesus, 
when we first get to meet him, we get excited. And that's okay. Like, I get excited. I've always been excited. I get super excited when Jesus calls me to something. And I'm like, I'm going to do it for you, Lord. But excitement can only bring you so far because the world hits you. Problems hit you. Illnesses hit you. Your friends, your doubts, your family. Everything from the world just hits you. And life gets freaking hard. Really hard. And so you start to feel like sinking. You feel like doubting and you're just like, what the heck is going on? I don't know what to do. I thought this was going to be easy. I thought all I had to do was look at you. I thought I just had to follow your word and I was good. But I wanted to go into this next part of the story that I recently read. So as we're sinking, or as Peter was sinking, Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. And he goes on to say, you have so little faith, Jesus said, why do you doubt me? 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 And it's cool that he mentions that. And I think it's cool that he mentions that because I think that's the point of the story. Like, I think the miracle is cool. I think that Peter choosing to go follow Jesus is cool. I think all that is awesome. I think the, the, the metaphor of the waves and the troubles and pain and all of that is cool. But I think the importance of the story and I, is the question that Jesus leaves us. Why do you doubt me? And when I read this, I was like, whoa, is Jesus speaking to me right now? Like, why do I doubt him? Why do you doubt him? I doubt him. I came to realize I doubt him because I put myself as my own savior. I doubt him because I try to do things on my own, on my own strength. And because I usually do things on my own strength, on my own will, on my own power, I tend to fall and fail and fail and fail and fail over and over and over and over again to the point where it's like the only thing that I know. And because I'm so used to failure, And I'm so brand new to this relationship with Jesus. I allow to confuse my own failures, my own self, my own idea of myself seeing as a savior for myself. I tend to confuse that with seeing Jesus as my savior. Now, what do I mean by that? Like, why, why do I mention that? I mention that because when you see Jesus as your savior or as your rock or as your anchor, things are completely different. But because we don't know the outcome of him being our rock or foundation, we tend to have little faith because the only thing we know is failure. And I think that's so funny that Jesus answers his own question before even asking the question. He says, you have so little faith. Why do you doubt me? Peter must have been like, uh, because I have little faith. That's why. And I look at myself and I'm like, yeah, I have little faith. I have little faith. He answered the question for me. It's cool. I think this is cool too. I'm just talking right now, but I think it's cool to see this because Jesus, one, he's loving enough to answer the question for me and kind of set me on the right path to figure out where I need to go to answer my his question. But he's also so loving to, uh, to start a dialogue with me and ask me the question, why do you doubt me? 
He doesn't go up to Peter and says, dude, you shouldn't have doubted me. He allows him the question. He allows him, he presents him with a question. And I think that's awesome because it shows that Jesus desires dialogue with you. He desires conversation with you. He delights to have conversation with you. And he's not afraid of your questions. He's not afraid of your doubt. He's not afraid of the things you're afraid to talk about in front of him. That's so freaking cool. That's absolutely awesome. And it's crazy because a lot of the times when we're in our storms and we get saved and we get out of it and we believe in Jesus during it, we forget about those moments of doubt and we immediately go, Jesus, you got me through it. You got me through it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we worship him just like the disciples did. There's no verse here where they're in the middle of the ocean and Peter says, oh, good question, Jesus. Let me answer that to you. And they're in the ocean for two hours while they're trying to have a dialogue. Peter is, for some reason, that question, that dialogue isn't even there, which is crazy because I think the miracle sometimes, which is great, I think the miracle is beautiful, but sometimes in life we allow the miracle of Jesus to, we get so excited about the miracle of him getting us out of our problems that we forget about the main question Jesus left us with. Why do you doubt me? So I present this to you, this, this story to you, because I want you to know that Jesus is not afraid of your doubt. He wants you to ask those questions. But uh, if you want these answers, one of the things I've learned personally in my life is that if I want to have little doubt or not experience doubt as much, jump into relationship with him, jump into dialogue with him, hang out with him. He's willing to give you an answer. He's willing to answer those questions. I realize the reason I have little faith is because a lot of the times it's because I don't spend enough time with Jesus because I, I, I haven't matured in my relationship with Jesus. And I, and hopefully this, this doesn't, this dialogue that I'm saying right now, this conversation I'm having with myself and with you doesn't scare you of being like, Oh my gosh, I need to read my Bible every day. I need to do this. I need to study. I need to, I need to, I need to listen to worship music every day, blah, 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 blah. Take a second, take a breather. That's not what I'm trying to say. I mean, I am saying, yeah, it's good to read your Bible. Like you should read it every day. I think it's important to, but not because for the sake of religion. I'm not telling you to read your Bible for the sake of religion so you can make God happy. I'm telling you it so you don't have to answer that question as much. Or you can at least have faith, more faith in opportunities where you feel like you're stuck in the ocean, sinking, drowning. So yeah, that's what I got to say. I hope that somehow this has helped you, but I think the main keys, I don't want to just be like, all right, see ya. (laughs) But I think one of the things that I've learned in my life to have more faith in Jesus is one, spend time with people who know the Bible a little bit more than you. Go on YouTube, look up a video. If you have questions about certain parts of your faith, go on the internet. We live in an age where we can go on the internet and we can look for answers of questions that we have. We can go on Twitter, we can go on YouTube, we can go on Twitch, we can find communities that are going through the same problems as we are in our doubts within our walks of faith. Find that community. 
Spend time in that community. But it's hard. I I understand, dude. It's hard to open up and, and talk about your problems and talk about your faith because nowadays we're in churches where everyone feels like they have everything together and we're good to go and we're knowledgeable and we're the best. Sometimes I've walked into churches where people are so knowledgeable that it's put fear in me to even want to talk about my own problems or my own doubts because I'm just like, dude, I should have faith as much as that guy. I should act as smart as that guy. And I get it. Sometimes people are so in love with their faith, uh, faith that they, they, they love to talk about certain things. And, and, and unfortunately, sometimes people get scared and confused and they're like, you know what? Maybe that guy who's talking so, so, where he's talking so enamored about his faith, he's not trying to do it to show off. Maybe it's, it's just that he loves Jesus and he's in a different walk. I'm trying to play, trying to see both sides of the story, I guess. But I hope when you listen to this podcast down in the comment section below or wherever, I pray that you find the community where you can express that doubt where you can find those answers to your questions, whether it's through, whether it's through the people you're hanging out with, whether it's you reading your Bible, whether it's through this YouTube video. But most of all, I hope you find your answers through your relationship with Jesus. I don't even know if I'm teaching right now. I don't, I, 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 I'm just, I'm just speaking my mind, but I, most of all, I just want to say out of all of this from everything that I'm saying right now is that I just want to speak to you, to the person who has doubt, you who has doubt in your faith. It's okay. It's absolutely okay to have doubt. God's not afraid of that. He's willing to hear you out. He delights in spending time with you. I was telling this with, a, I was talking about this with another friend. He loves hanging out with you. He loves when you run back to him, when you have a question. Talking to God isn't just about saying your Hail Marys or Our Fathers or Glory Bees and that's it. And that's the only way you can communicate to him. Talking to Jesus can be you going out on a walk. And looking around and appreciating life. It could be you going on a surf. It could be you going to the movies and treating yourself. It could be you listening to this podcast or you laying in your room, praying. It could be you. I don't know. I just think that sometimes we put this... For sure, God is holy. Like, God is holy, and we should respect that, you know? Like, God is holy, and we should acknowledge that he's holy. But he's also, I mean, he came down as a human, so he can speak with us. So he could show us that he's he's willing to hear you out just as you are. God delights in you and he's not afraid of your doubt. That's all I got to say. He's not afraid of your doubt. He's not afraid of your questions. Go for it. Look for the answers and pray that you get the right answers too. Because you can hear a lot of answers, but pray on it. He'll give you the wisdom. He'll give you the right wisdom to know what's the right answer. But yeah, that's pretty much, that's all I got to say. Hopefully you, hopefully you, hopefully you learn something from this. I just want to let you know Jesus loves you so much. He cares for you. He loves everything about you. He loves you. I hope you feel that. I really do hope you feel that, that he freaking loves you, dude. He's not afraid of your conversations. He wants to have conversation with you. He loves having conversation with you. He loves spending time with you. 
But yeah, I don't want to sound like a broken record player. So that's pretty much it. So with that being said, this is my second podcast by myself. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I don't know. Dang, that was crazy. But yeah. Um, please pray for me. I want to learn more about my Bible. I want to learn more about loving people. I hope that people that listen to this too, whether you're a believer or not, dude, I really hope that you know that as I talk in this Christianese also, this Christianese way of speaking, that you do not feel secluded from the way I talk. That anyone is welcome into this room. Anyone is welcome to this video. There's a fly in front of me. <laughs> I was trying to catch it with my hand. But anyways, uh, I love you. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. And I hope, sorry, I'm trying to get this fly, but I hope you have an amazing week. And I hope you know that God delights in you and he's not afraid of your questions. I even suggested, maybe after this podcast, sit down, take a second, five minutes, two minutes, one minute, an hour. Just talk to him. He's ready. He's waiting at the door of your heart mind and soul don't be afraid he's not gonna bite he loves you i'll see you guys later love you guys peace out and remember we're always better together love you guys peace